Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show. So uh, you got a new album out, and uh, you know uh, what a what a great deal with this, Kurt. You know, uh, for uh, you know for the last time, your new album that came out recently, and you played all of the instruments. Yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> a lot of people don't know about my history on even all of our Bodine's records. We're playing most of the instruments most of the time. I was just the guy who could do that and could do it the quickest and most efficient. So very often. Uh, I would just go in and knock the parts out. And, so, and very often we had this process because it was just kind of like when we started out, it was just two guys and stuff. So I would kind of build tracks up myself and then we would sing together and put them out that way. So the process has always kind of been um, similar to that. Very often, like I would sing the song in my head while I was playing the drum part and then playing a guitar part over that and just kind of build them up through the years. It was rare that we were able to really get in the studio as a full band and play, which if you can, I, I think that's the best way to do it. But um, if you have other other ways, you know, these days more than ever with the music industry, the way it is, you kind of have to adjust and do what you can. So that's what I did on this record. I had been doing a lot of music for a show called The Ranch on Netflix. Yeah. So I had a lot of material sitting around. So I just was pulling this stuff up. And yeah, yeah a, little, a little popular show called The Ranch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a few yeah. people probably yeah. saw that and heard your music, you know. Yeah, I was really lucky because the producers were big fans of the band. So they basically said, send us as much stuff as you can and we'll try to get it all in the show. So I just kept writing and recording stuff. So I built up a lot. So the last couple of records, I've been trying to get this stuff out to, to the fans because they couldn't hear it really anywhere else. Right. Well, you know, and, and what I really enjoyed about this album, you know, listening to the tracks and, and you know, it's going to have to be on my regular playlist now is a few of the songs obviously remind me of classic Bodines, but also some of the stuff, too, that you've got on here, Kurt. You know, you got a little jazz, you got a little more rock and stuff. You know, you've got some nice acoustic guitar. Uh, you know, the first track is, a, you know, kind of staccato heavy keyboards. You got a little bit of everything in this 14th album you put out. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think, you know, during the pandemic, we were all sitting home trying to figure out stuff to do. So it gave me a lot of time to just mess around with stuff and mess around with different sounds, um, you know, and and like on that first track, I just wanted something different and something emotional and stuff. Yeah. So you get the freedom to kind of dig around with sounds and try some different things and uh, see, see, you know, you're throwing colors at the wall. You see what you like. Well, you know, and you brought up the ranch and obviously with with the Bodines and with the music that you've been a part of for so many years, you know, you have so many tracks that have been featured on TV shows and films and everything. What does that feel like now when you're hanging around the house and, you know, and a, and a movie or a TV show comes on and it's like, there's your music as part of yeah. it? Well, you know, these days, what makes it cool is I have kids, you know, and so like when you're kids hear stuff like that you get to kind of re-experience it and so they they are excited by it so that's just like makes me feel like i'm actually doing something <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> Which is hard, you know, like at, I mean, look at how much music you put out you know yeah right you know it was like that when we were shooting the ranch too we i would go out there to the set sometimes and bring them and be like oh yeah this is ashton or this is sam elliott you know and they so it, it, in their eyes, they thought dad was actually doing something important instead of just, you know, wasting time around the house. You were the cool dad. Yeah. Well, for here and there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've got the yeah. same thing with my daughter. It's like when you get those cool moments, you kind of got to relish them because a lot of times yeah. we're just, you know, the, the person doing the dad jokes. Yeah. Usually they're just like, shut up, shut <laughs> it, you know, I don't want to hear it and. So now and then they remember um, like, oh, yeah, he does a cool job, you know. Well, you know, and, and I remember, you know, when you guys uh, broke out, you know, with Party of Five, you know, and that song. And, and once again, you know, I was working in TV back then as well. And uh, it just broke everywhere, you know, yeah. and that, you know, really, you know, and you guys had been around, you know, long before that. But it kind of put the band on the map. Yeah. On a global perspective, it really did, because uh, up to then we were, you know, big, big in the Midwest. And we did okay around the country in North America, but that song, yeah, definitely opened us up around the world to a whole audience that probably had never heard of us before. 
Well, and closer to free too, to me, you know, and still, I think the song holds up so well, Kurt, to where it was a very different sound at that time. Yeah. Well, you didn't hear anything else like it on the radio. And, you know, just like with songs on your new album, it, it was high energy. You know what I mean? You, you felt like it was building up and it was exciting and you wanted to be a part of that song. Yeah. I think, I think it was really uh, a good version of Bodine's, you know, to be introduced to, because we, we were always a very high energy act and, um, and, and, you know, good singing and stuff like that. Good mess, simple melodies. It was really representative of, of what we did kind of best. And so I was happy. It was a song like that. Sometimes bands have hits that's it's really not their thing. And yet they they're stuck in it. And with our most popular songs, because we've had a lot of big songs at AAA radio as well. Oh, yeah. They all were very representative of us and songs we played really well. And so um, it, we've been fortunate that way. Yeah, it's fortunate to not have a song that doesn't represent your style, you know, like, like as you and I know to where, you know, a heavy metal band will hit with a ballad and it's like the yeah. only ballad they have. And it's like going and they can't get away from it. <laughs> yeah, no, very, very often. Yeah. Some big, giant, stringy, beautiful song. But yeah, it's not really what they were trying to do. So we were lucky we didn't have to do that. And we got we got known for our, a certain kind of sound ringing guitars, ringing harmonies kind of thing. And, and luckily that's what we did best. Yeah. And definitely, I think uh, what I always enjoyed too, Kurt, was the melding of acoustic and electric guitar. You know, I think that, you know, the Bodines have always showcased that, you know, with the songwriting, with the playing. And also you guys ha- have a permanent exhibit at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's kind of a Midwest band thing. It's right in the middle of the the uh, museum there is kind of beautiful to be included in that. Cause when you look at it, there's so many great artists in there. And so they have my lyrics up and guitar and stuff. So it's, 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 it's pretty cool to go in there and look at it and think you have some little part of the rock and roll history. You know, it makes you feel good. I think it's incredible. Well, and also I got to bring this up for our viewers that may not know, you know, in between, you know, uh, writing and recording and touring, you know, with hit songs and everything you do with the Bodines, uh, you also do a podcast that you have going on. And and I think you launched that uh, what back last year. How's that working out for you? Pretty good. Um, my oldest daughter really pushed me into it. I wasn't thinking I should do more stuff, but she just asked if I, you know, she thought I should. And I and I've always wanted to talk about not just, you know, music and what I do with music, but about creativity in general, because. In school, I really didn't fit in with how they taught things. I had a very creative mind and I wasn't book smart, but I was really smart in another way that that I don't think our school systems really foster in kids. And I think it's really, really important um, to change that. So I wanted to speak out about it and I wanted to talk to people who did something in their life creatively, whether it was a business thing or a scientific thing or a musical thing or whatever it was they did that had uh, something to do with thinking on their own, trusting intuition, you know, things like that, that led them to success somehow, or, or they just got a good story to tell, you know? And yeah. so I thought if I could talk about that, then it's going to be fun for me too, because I'm going to get to talk to really interesting people and their interesting stories. And so that's what I'm doing. We're just starting our second season and uh, it's been great so far because I got to talk to a lot of great people, you know, people I would never get to talk to normally. Well, you know, I, I wanted to bring up also besides the new album being out and you're, and you're out on tour starting on the second season of the podcast. Uh, are we going to hear any more placements of your music coming out, you know, uh, later this year or next year on uh, for TV and film also? I hope so. Um, I'm definitely working on it. I don't have anything I'm working on like currently at the moment where I can tell you about it. Um, there was a band, I can't remember their name now, but they just did a re uh, a version of Closer to Free for the CW show. Um, I don't even remember the name. It was about an Area 51 kind of show. And it's really beautiful because it doesn't sound anything like Closer to Free as you know it. It sounds like a beautiful orchestrated ballad and it's just gorgeous so sometimes we get music in place um that we didn't even you know play and record which is really nice to hear sometimes it sounds just great but uh but currently i don't have any new shows to tell you about i'm hoping to find some more because it's a great way as any kind of songwriter to get your music heard somewhere 
mm-hmm. is when some show decides to like help you out. Yeah, totally. Well, and I want to make sure for our viewers, Kurt, that they know where to go for the for the website, for your podcast, for the tour, for everything else involving, you know, you and the Bodines. Where should they go to? You go to Bodines.com. You can get anything you want there as far as like show information or merchandise and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, of course, we have the social media sites and stuff that we post on here and there. The podcast is called Staring at the World, Kurt Newman. Um, You can get that anywhere that there are podcasts, whether it's Spotify or Apple or I don't know. I don't know all the places you can get podcasts, but anywhere you can get them, you can hear it there. And we do post them as well on YouTube and stuff like that. And so there's a Bodine's official YouTube. And, you know, I'm not big on social media and being able to do it myself, but um, there's so many places to kind of hear stuff now. So I'm sure um, wherever your favorite place is, you can hear our music or the podcasts or everything there. Well, and I know that our viewers are definitely going to want to add uh, your new album for the last time, your 14th studio album to their playlist or, or go to the website and get a copy. Yeah. Get a physical copy because you know, you never know when the internet's going to go down. (laughs) <laughs> exactly and i love the uh, i love the uh, image on the front of the cover too yeah me too you know i put a lot of heart into the into this record uh, a lot of it's about family and um that journey you take as a family and life you know and uh so i felt like it was a lot of personal stories in this one as opposed to the last record which was really good as well but it was more when i worked on the ranch they would give me subjects to write about and then i would write songs about them so it wasn't so much personally connected as like this record has a real personal connection for me you know and i could tell by listening to the tracks too kurt to where i mean you know it certainly the songs touched me and and they could you could tell they came you know from an honesty and in, in your personal you know yeah. perspective on things and i think that shines through yeah yeah well Thank you. Yeah, I, that's what I tried to do with it. And and I think a lot of people relate to stories like that, too. You know, we're all we're all going through life here and um, getting through everyday struggles with our families and children and growing up. And 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 that's a common thread. And I, I really like being able to write about it and sing about it because I feel like we're all together in it. I so agree. Well, Kurt Newman of the Bodines, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on tour. Congratulations on the great new album. And I can't wait to check out your new podcast, too. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. And everybody, go check it out. I hope you like it. Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bones show. 